itself. See Association of Physical Medicine Rehabilitation, Indian Association of Physical Medicine Rehabilitation. Today's talk is on a basic fundamental things relating of a research publication. All of publishing our work in the public. You of course take that much of interest to from writing a publication from our research. End product of most of the research is in written form, that is a publication. And you know this academic success of an academician depends upon his research and publication. Whenever you sit for any uh, selection board, so common question asked is, what is your number of publication? We have friends in our specialty, having numbers of publications in fact a bit. One lot of hard work is those things in one literature. So it is not a one day work. It is not a simple job. But everybody, every physiatrist should work in hard work to see the day of light in the form of publication in a chunk. You are working hard some work. So, this thing of a research article is an art, and this is an art of expression. There are good, clinic, good clinicians are there, good physiatrists are there, but to express their work in public, in public domain, and it's also art of presentation. How best we you presenting your work? Many times the simple works can be published if your presentation style is good. It is also art of communication. The same thing you may think that is already published. What more to write in this? What more to publish in this video? But still, some things if you can present in a better way, if you can communicate your things. In a way, certainly that will be accepted for publication. The most difficult part of writing is simple getting started. You are doing work, surgeries, some interventions, but we fail to focus on our works. So we should our work should have certain objectives. Then only you can uh, reach, we can uh, write a research article. So it should be have we should have a smart objective. Just thinking that uh, no, no, this is a good work. I'll do I'll publish it now. So it should have a smart objective. Like in management, it's taught that smart objectives. Similarly, here also it can be applicable in research publication, research work. That must be very specific. It's not a vague one, and it should be whatever work you are doing. It must be quantifiable. It must be reproducible, and it should be achievable. And it should be a realistic one. It will be achievable, and it should be about. But research should not uh, continue for years together. There should be a time limit. Time limit of collecting data. Time limit of analysis your data, time limit of uh, writing your article, and time limit of publication. So, this smart objectives can be included in a research publication. Also, one more thing we added to smart is the ethical part. So, other way it can be briefly for the uh, medical research publication. It is must be feasible, must be interesting one. 
Starting up research, we all have a lot of images. In a, in our mind, no, no, it is a difficult part. I don't have that much of images. So I can write it this way. So we have a lot of images. We have to come out of that image. Yes, I can do. I can do. I can write research article. So inhibition should you should come out of that inhibition. And second part is failure of planning. Surgical procedure. When we go for any intervention, whether when we are going for any pediatric rehabilitation management, you have to go through the uh, the procedure you are going to do. So you should you should be thorough enough the procedure. You should have a good knowledge to go through the different articles. Whether any new things have come up to modify your your uh, procedure. So, if you have a read about the things which you are going to do, you have read more particles, you may find different types of outcomes, you may find different types of scales, you may find different types of motivation of your procedure, what you plan. If you have planned properly, you will get to know that what assessment to be done before starting the procedure. So, you must go through some articles related to your procedure. Even today also, whenever we plan for any Specifically, we try to even it we know if it's equal number different requires a T lengthening. Still, to go for any uh, literature on uh, spastic correction of equinus deformity, go and read the literature, see anything is there. So, if you read those literature, you'll find that what outcome measures need to be taken, what different assessment methods you, you, you should uh, record it before surgery. So if you have not planned, we have done 5, 6, 10, 15 cases, and when you plan, oh, I have done 15 cases, now I should publish it. But unfortunately, you have not prepared, you have not planned. So, you have not recorded the free data. This is the free one. So, we shall have a proper planning. We try to plan, we try to figure out that and we try to publish for that. The second part is execution. Recording data, you are collecting data, try to Reproduce it. This is problem for everybody, even for us also. That is what we do. We have three, four projects. We have data are only collected, but we fail to complete the writing part. This failure of solution. So you should have a uh, sharp object. You know, I will have to make it. It's possible. So execution is also important. So before going for any topic, such topic, if you want to conduct it, straight up analysis. On the topic are selected, which includes competencies, characteristics, what you studied, and any specific recommendation in your uh, studied articles. Okay, so prepare for collecting those data, prepare a web based for citation management tool. You know, this citation management tools. If you don't know, discuss with your seniors. Uh, and again, you can get it from your faculty. You also have different citation management systems. Uh, most commonly systems used are the Jupyter and Google as we are looking for Jupyter. So, that you have a text as well. You can collect your all your related articles in that. Then, go the papers and go through these papers. You suppose you have planned for uh, correction of this plastic economics deformity. So, what are the related letters of that? So, you download all these letters and you go through details of these articles. Some of the related articles. Suppose you have planned for a surgical correction or a correction by buttons. Okay. So, uh, all the related articles published on surgical correction or by correction by buttons in the toxin, photocopy all these important articles. And in that article, on the title page itself, not your part of the articles which are useful for 
different sections of your proposed articles. Some part may be helpful for writing your introduction part. Some part may be helpful in your literature. Some part may be helpful in discussion part. So you first download all your, uh, all related literatures, make the photocopy of important articles out of them, then highlight important sections of those articles and uh, on you search you will just mention it that this part may be discussed in your discussion part this part may be helpful in my introduction citation so this way you plan it for uh, articles related articles and it it you can outlines you have first thought of a concept you can broaden your concept once you have read the related articles Okay, a brief outline is always there in research or writing. Reading a related publications can draw the outlines of particular sections. If you have read it, you will find some extra uh, parameters. You can find some extra scales used for your uh, can be used for research article. This is all possible if you have gone through the articles. Okay, and if you have Found that no, no, these 10 articles are useful for me. Most useful, not even most useful for me. You try to uh, collate all these 10 articles. Collate like you have photograph collate. Similar here also, you have a collate. So all these five or 10 articles should be combined, should be imprint your mind, make an outline of all these articles, direct review of that, or outlining all important points on those articles. Now coming to the Research publications. Here, today's discussion is on research writing, writing a publication. So, the, we are not going to discuss about how to prepare a research proposal. Here, that means you have your research is already completed and you have planned for writing. I think this also helps in writing your thesis also. So, one of the components of a research publication, the first part is the title. It may be a full length title or some art, some journals ask for an additional title called title. The next part is the abstract. Next part is the uh, introduction. In abstract, keywords can be added to that. Next is introduction. Then review literature. Review literature is not usually a part in your research publication, but yes, this is the important part in your thesis writing. That is review literature. What procedures and methods you have followed. Next part is resolve. Then discussion. Then limitations. In conclusion, then reference. So these are the headings under which you have to prepare for your research article. From the beginning, you make all these headings and start writing on each heading. So coming to the title, the first part, the face of the article. The face of the article is the title. So in title, so uh, should be it should describe what a paper is all about. What is the? I mean. Nobody has a that much of patience to go through the whole paper. When you search for a paper, uh, if you have written the keywords in your title, so uh, people will search on those articles and your uh, article will come uh, in all search mode. So that means the visibility of a, uh, your article is a more title is being catchy and you have used words and keywords in that. So this short title or one line describes what a paper is all about. It should be briefly describe your study and you should use identifiable keywords in the title so that it helps in searching your articles by the researchers that increases the visibility of the article. The title preferably uh, is around 10 to 15 words. Again, many journals in their uh, author's guidelines, they typically mention what should be the maximum number of words in a particular uh, title of a manuscript. If you are increasing, exceeding those words, you will not be able to submit it. So, before submitting article, go to the author's guideline, see how many number of words permissible for writing a title of a your manuscript. So, it should be 10 to 15 words or uh, some articles, uh, some journals accept up to 30 months. And those journals, they ask for a long title. 
running catalyst is in within five to ten words. That means you should use all your keywords in your running title so that a person, a researcher, can search your articles using those keywords. So we are to ensure clarity. So not be used in this uh, title. That sometimes say the concept of the title. So jargon should be avoided. Should not use many words and the uh, it should not be too broad. So be very specific. Most readers prefer getting facts as quick as possible. They don't have patience. They have to uh, download uh, 10, 15, 20 articles on their uh, interest. So nobody has that much of time to go through the total article or go through the abstract even. So title must be catchy enough, should carry keywords that increases visibility of your article. The next part of after title is the abstract. This abstract present to the title. This summarizes the article. This is the compilation of information on a topic. It will the author to decide to read the original or not. So abstract is the face of a article published in a journal. So because abstracts are free, most abstracts are free available in the uh, so if somebody is searching on a particular subject, they search, they found first uh, these abstracts. They go through the abstract. If they feel that abstract is really genuine, able to read, useful for their uh, search purpose, they will go for the whole article or the article. So uh, the abstract must be concise enough. So, uh, so to compiling the whole uh, your research work in that so that the uh, authors or researchers will be interested to go through the complete article. So it see briefly describe the background, the post, third, third, and conclusion section. This abstract section, uh, there is no review literature, there is no discussion section in that. Okay, and uh, the, in, it may have a, the first part is either introduction, some uh, journals ask for instead of an introduction, some journals ask for a on structure abstract, some journals ask for structure abstract. If it is on structure abstract, then the, it is just simply a paragraph without any headings like background, purpose, methods, results, or conclusion. If it is they ask a structure abstract, you have to have these things like introduction, pose of your study, if you want the methods, if you want the results, and if you the So these uh, few words, it depends upon the number of words and what type of people have a single article. Some journals uh, stick to word count to 250 or 300. If you are writing a systematic review, and, uh, the maximum permissible in abstract, maybe 300 or 350. So, if you are uh, submitting a case report, it may be 150 words. So, all the depends upon what type of uh, research article you have. Accordingly, you can prepare your uh, abstract to limiting the word number as per the requirement of the journal. 50, 250, 300, it will be Okay. So, accordingly, you have to prepare the journal. Then, you have to take uh, from one journal, you may have to change your abstract, limit your number. So, a lot of changes sometimes is needed. Seven times changes are needed as per the requirement of the journal. All abstracts are followed by keywords or base words, typical subjective headings, main words. Sometimes we take it casually. So you should not take it casually for writing your keywords. Maximum number of keywords permissible are three to six or three to five. So these keywords are the words which increases visibility of your uh, work in public domain, in articles, in novel literature. So keywords must be very specific, which is uh, multiple times used in your uh, research work. And uh, some uh, some journals ask for this. Uh, you can uh, do a keyword. Uh, no. Certain journals they ask for specific. They have their website. 
And uh, if you don't have that knowledge also, you read the related articles, see what keywords they have used. You can use those keywords for your research purpose. So that increases the visibility of your uh, paper. Next, coming to is the introduction. It is the most important part uh, next to the abstract uh, question. This introduction is the, this provides the, uh, the purpose of the, is to justify the theory study. This section really says what are you are doing this study and it emphasizes the importance of the research question and the documenting the need to answer the question. So the research question, the important, most important part of the work is there in the introduction. So many times the readers they go through the introduction to abstract. If they found that no, this there is no definite research question, your research is not strong enough. To read further, sometimes place you know, such the same thing. First, see the introduction part. How it is written? How strong is the research person? Then only uh, they will for for them. Okay. So research person, what you have trained for your article is most important, which is there in the introduction. To those research questions, how you do research questions? This is many times uh, we are doing work, but we don't know what is, what can be, uh, what those things can be. Uh, it's a some hidden person. We have to search for that hidden key things which is still not uh, published or not worked out. Okay, what you will get in articles. You will find existence of any conflict in the research. You have read related articles. You have found any existence of any conflicts in the results or any recommendations. Go to the articles at the end of the discussion. What they have recommended. You can take up with as a research question as a research for you in the field or in this research. Okay. Then sometimes re evaluation of the old research. Research means research. It is the any source things you already have. If you want to research it, try to find out if there are any new things in that in the already search articles. So it is uh, if it is not always new, you can evaluate the old research with modern things. Suppose one article is published in 1960, 1965 or 69. Third, they have to use for assessing. They have changed or new equipment has come up now by using the new equipment, same research question can be used. You may find different results. So research is not always new. You can find new things in the old things also. So your research question made sense, or you can use the old research question by evaluating you by using new parameters, by using new scales, by using new equipments. You can use source after the old source articles. Okay. And sometimes same research can be done on a different population. Okay. Somebody has done Eastern population, some somebody can do a global population, somebody can uh, research on a other group of populations. So uh, research can question can be re, uh, reused, or you can find a new question in your own research. So that all these things are possible if you Go through the related articles, good number of related articles, go to find out what are the literature gap in the current concept. You have to find out. Okay, so you write in research outlines. How do you write in research for your articles for your thesis? So the start, the first will be like this. What is, what is already present in the current literature? That you start from that point. What is not known? In that known things, what part is still missing? That is the literature gap. What is controversial? Very If you go to systematic reviews, you will find many controversies in the articles. So you pick up, pick up those controversial things, and that can be your research question. So start with the what is known, what is not known, what is controversial, and what are the limitations of the old studies. What are the recommendations of the old studies? 
Okay. So in this way, your flow should be there. So the most important points of introduction are what present publication is talking about. About your uh, such things what you are planning. Okay. So uh, from that, you can see that what part is not covered, what is the gap in that, what is the conflict in that, what are the recommendations in that. So accordingly, you will plan your resource. So that will cover in the introduction person. So during those recommendations, conflicts, so these things must be cited in the introduction. So that a researcher or a reader will tell that yes, these are the things, these are the controversies still existing in the current concept. So that has to be researched. Right? So those articles must be cited in proper way, in proper place, in a sequential manner. Okay. The third part is the section should not be lengthy. If you read number of articles, you try to collage all these articles with paragraph, paragraph, paragraph. So at the end, you will find that you have these two pages. You have cost 100 words. So that is not acceptable. Your article may come down. So the uh, introduction should be very precise and concise enough and focused. It should be focused on to your research objective. It should not be lengthy, it should not be choosing the purpose of the study. So if you have picked up your right research questions, you will end with the project for study. Just briefly, as I said, with the group class, what is known, what is not known, what is controversies, what is recommendation that, and what is your purpose in study in the current concept. So this is the way how you should write should go for an introduction, should go for a science introduction with a focus objective. All uh, uh, the introduction part end with a last paragraph that is purpose of the study. Purpose of the study. This introduction part is mostly written in past tense because you are referring the old articles which are already written. Uh, purpose of the study should be written, I can be written either in present tense or in past tense. Okay. The next part is the review of literature. Of course, this is not a person covered uh, in, in this article, but yes, it's an important person in writing uh, cases. Of course, this is reviewing the literature is to develop and understand it. The state of knowledge on the top. You should have a place. topic on which we are going to search or to write your thesis. Okay, this provides means of the study. Methods use what methods are uh, already used. You can select those methods or not. What the measures they have taken? Is it really, uh, what is really useful for you or not? Instruments and procedures are already used by previous authors, previous researchers, whether those can be useful or not, and different variables used in assessment of the cases or subjects. So these things are uh, can be collected in a, which is the essential part of starting any research. So this requires a, any uh, search review literature requires a depth knowledge of the topic so that you can read topic or the old article on your own. This requires analysis of the published article. The concept or theme must be reproduced for that describing the study results. We all have a, students all have a habits of copying from the uh, old literature in the study here. No. You should read it, consider it, read it own words gist of the study, not about the collected from the whole literature. It facilitates analysis of the studies, studies showing significant effect or not reporting significant, significant effects. Both are important. Both are important for research. Okay, and it also helps 
so in characteristics of subjects and limitation of the study all these things are required while you plan for a research article as i said these are also helpful for writing your introduction to in for publish your articles in a journal there are certain misunderstandings in the sir misunderstandings are present in this series of paragraphs as i said should not try to write series of para paragraphs putting results of each study or the other so study instead of writing the results it fails to connect the main thing about the literature and the topic if you just copy paste one paragraph the result it will not show the complete the, the thing or object of the literature it should be critical analysis of literature and something saying it here so read the article conceive it and see the which portion of uh, the says Question of the old article or new article will be helpful for your subject of research. That is what quoted here instead of writing the result only. The next portion is the procedure. Next portion is the procedure or methods. This describes subject. The first part, where you are the study, place where you are. Carrying the study, beginning of the study, the starting of the study and ending of the study, place of study, then about the subjects. Subject means your uh, which you are going to research. So subjects are selected as per your set criteria. Those are inclusion criteria, and some subjects may require to exclude those who are. Confirming your exclusion criteria. Exclusion and exclusion criteria. Then, what intervention you have used? Is it your observational study? Two days intervention study? Two days quasi experimental study? So that uh, what intervention you have you have used that I have to you have to answer it. Then outcome measures. Outcome measures. You have used for writing this research article, conducting this research. Then way of collecting data. How you have collected the data? And the method of data analysis. What sampling procedure you have adopted for uh, calculating your sample size? Your method of data collection. These all headings, all headings are there in the calculating procedures or methods or trial methods. So you have to write touch. All these headings writing the training section of your script. The next part is statistical analysis part. You have to listen software you have used for analyzing the data and what was your level of significance used for during the data analysis and type of analysis depending on the data or variables whether you are. Using the parametric data or non-parametric data, so accordingly you have to decide. Uh, you need not to go through because every every one of us are not so. Uh, okay, I mean, thorough about the statistical analysis. If you are very much thorough, if you are aware about the different use of spaces, then it is fine. But if you are not aware about that, then you can take any of the strategy. There is nothing wrong in that. But you should have thick knowledge on that. How you are going to analyze your data? Type of analysis you have, type of study you have, quantitative research or qualitative research that you must know. So you should have a basic fundamental idea about the type of research you are conducting, type of data you are collecting, and what type of analysis you are supposed to do. If you are doing it, it's fine. All you can take help of your is very thorough about the uh, statistics. So the data can be parametric. Brief about the data analysis. It can data can be parametric, can be non-parametric. Parametric data is the continuous data like intervals and ratio, and data where observations are observations are normally distributed. That is, they are confined to a small area. Sample size should be 
The uh, this is this presents a proof statement of the meaningful findings without an explanation. Don't try to explain your results in your uh, published articles because you have a limited number of words. Your whole research articles may permit to 2500 or 3000 words, so it should not be uh, explained uh, details in the results section. Rather, discuss uh, the results should be minimum in this section. Interpretation data should be made. In that whatever interpretation you want to do, that can be done in the first paragraph of the discussion. Okay, so try to uh, put your data in table. The numerical data are best depicted in the tables and figures. The text portion is best limited to statistically significant finding. You don't have to explain everything. Only significant things, those are significant data that can be mentioned just below the table with words. Associated information can be summarized with significant level. This is up to which you should mention. Results are best presented by stating the outcomes only, not describing the whole table. Only this outcome and only the significant those data which are significant or important, not significant data also. That can be shown in the section. In the third section, you have tables. So tables, you should mention uh, in the number all the tables appropriately. You can uh, a title. If you look to this, I'm sorry. This is a table which says about the variables. And if you see here, you should mention the uh, number of the table, number of the table. So you can see a research article uh, by the viewers, you have not given a title or appropriate title. In the units of measurements, like in this case, the BMI, KG per meter square. So, indicate whatever parameters you have taken, how the units of measurement, measurement in the indicate the sample size. See, in this group, there are two groups. 
n is equal to 41, n is equal to 17. So you must mention the uh, sample size in the and abbreviations, whatever you use uh, here, like an IP basis score is used here. So that must be written. All abbreviations should be written as a footprint in VL. So this is the complete format of table. If you don't forget, it should be number, should be placed in appropriate place in the text content, and it should be numbered sequentially. And each table should have a valid till per sample size should be mentioned in that. All units whenever required should be mentioned. And if you have used an abbreviation in the table, it should be written in full form as a cook. This person is called cook not of a. So the, this carries all information, all abbreviations used inside the table. Next is figures. Figures also should be uh, very clear, legitimate, and should be original. Should be original, clear, and appropriate figures. If you don't have any figures, if you want to borrow a figure, please don't try to copy paste from Google and paste your uh, paste the figures in your you know screen. That will reject that. That will fall under plagiarism. If you don't have a related figure or important picture, if you want to borrow from the other articles, see copy the articles you are you want to borrow from that article. If it is open access uh, article. It is fine because that's open creative communication coming to open creative communication. You can borrow the articles, you can use the photographs of the uh, open access uh, articles, but still it's better to get permission from the author or from the publisher. But in case of uh, subscribe journals, permission from the publisher is must. Permission from author is also must. So uh, don't try to copy paste always. So always get permission from the publisher or from the author if you want to be able to do this. Or else use your photographs which is very clear and should be uh, should be added, attached with a appropriate legend. Like this uh, this uh, photograph. You should have a legend. Legend means the figure number and this is the legend. So many journals they ask for legend separately to be submitted. And some of the journals they ask for a figure with a picture with legend along with the picture. And the legend must be also appropriate title. Uh, we use correct words like that uh, for one of my articles, like this article I submitted to a journal. I have written a legend that this is the this is uh, your split and split put deformity. Okay. So uh, if have the word should be uh, appropriate, I have written in that article, lobster clown. It's also same as a clip, but that is the old terminology. The reviewers return that, saying that this terminal is now no more accepted. Please change the legend of the picture. So I have to change it to a split hand, split photo terminology instead of lobster clown. So whatever legend you are writing for a particular image, this must be appropriate enough. That must be this must be current one. Okay. Then uh, the uh, figures must be uh, appropriate, must be cited in appropriate place in the script. So not a project, must be sequential. The next part is the discussion. This discussion is the important part uh, that really requires your in-depth knowledge uh, in writing uh, your script. So this section for uh, discussion explains about explains about the interpretation of the results. Discussion is the comparison of the results of the current study with those of other findings and integration of this new information with established theory and practice. Whatever things you have uh, got in your research articles, compare with the old articles and how it differs from the uh, other articles, how it can be generalized in the other studies that everything is discussed in the uh, discussion section. This section briefly includes, explains the result of the study. The initial paragraph of discussion is always the uh, concise result, the concise result of the study. This explains the result of the study and compares with the result of the other studies, how the results are related to the hypothesis and last part of our discussion includes limitation of your study. 
and implication of study, where you can implicate. There are certain uh, general tasks of looking at implication, utility of your study. And what are the further recommendations? We have any limitation in the number, we have limitation in the procedure, we have limitation in the sample size, all have to be declared in the application. So that other researchers can pick up your data, your recommendation, your limitation, they can carry out the research further. So you should have a uh, end your discussion with further recommendations. The next part is the summary. Again, the summary is not a part of the research article. It is a part of the thesis writing that ends with discussion. It is an overview of the whole research article. It is a need for the study, statement of the problem, and need of the methods and results. When you have to conclude your research article, a statement which are justified from the results, speculative comments should be avoided. We thought the result may be because of that. There should not be any speculation in your study. Whatever you have done to, to study. Basically, the theme of the conclusion is whatever aim and objective you have set. That you have to justify. Okay. And it should be data based. It should be reflect the answer of your hypothesis tested. So this has to be, uh, this must included in the conclusion many times. You turn back your article saying that the conclusion is not confirming your objective of a study. Many times this, uh, this is the thing uh, that appears. You have written a conclusion. The is not confirming the objective of the study. So, your conclusion must include the terms of the, uh, your study in the form of what objective you have set, whether your outcomes are getting to the objectives of the study. That is the conclusion question of your article. The next part is the reference part. You always write reference after the, in the conclusion. Reference are different two types. One is primary reference, the secondary reference. The reference are the reference from the original articles. So when you quote a primary reference, that means you have gone through the articles, the original article you have quoted. Sometimes we need to uh, go for a uh, give, uh, go for a give, I mean secondary references. And secondary references are mentioned, that means uh, reference the uh, articles sent by someone other than the author of the original. So it should be used by only the primary article is not principle. Means through article, quoted a article, the article for you it is the secondary. You should try to get the original article from the reference, from the citation of the your article. So uh, you should give first priority the second reference. Yes, when the second reference is not traceable, when the original article is not traceable, yes, you can use a second reference there. The process used or cited in the preparation of the research paper, which are uh, at the end of your uh, article or script in the form of references. References cited in the text should be in the list of Reference in the appropriate order. You should not present in a Like five cited is five reference first cited, then ten, then one. It should not be like that. Your reference should be sequential in a oral form. Sometimes the reference word confuses the bibliography. Bibliography are mostly in the books. These are the references for additional meetings. They not be quoted in the text. The extra things which are not put in the text, but these articles can be or these chapters can be useful for improving your concept on the resource article. These are given as data. How to present a uh, reference style? There are different types of uh, presenting references at the end of research publication. Each journal will have their own format of uh, citation, how they allow all the things you will get from the uh, your say information to authors, you have to read, go to that, 
reference accordingly. You have to change repeatedly the references as per the if someone if your your article is rejected from one journal, you have to choose another journal. That time your reference need to be changed as per the requirement of the new journal. So you have to be sure about that what type of reference are using. Location of the citation in the text, uh, it should be uh, in the sequential form, as I said. There are different ways of writing the reference at the end of your research article. Some uh, journals in the broad world is given three types, namely like date style and the reference, uh, name and year of publication, uh, and name of the authors written along with the article name. Some other forms are alphabet. Number system. These are number and numbers and cited the text. Then all of the citation system. The way cited can be on the end. So basically, these three systems are used when you go for in the other way, citing your articles, citing your interpreting uh, friends at the end. About of uh, citation styles used for during the writing article. Again, depends upon the requirement of the journal. The most common types of uh, uh, citation styles used are upper citation styles, that is uh, American Psychological Association. This style requires enumeration of the author's name along with the year of publication uh, instead of writing before. So that increases the text size, increases the page number. Uh, it one way it helps in authors or the readers that instantly they can get the article on the spot on the line itself. The concept on which they are trying to get the data, they can get it on spot. But other way also this uh, becomes very messy by getting text material. So many authors are there. You have to two three names of the authors along with the year of publication, that we can say uh, uh, increases the page size and sometimes become boring for reading an article. Uh, the best method of uh, method of using this uh, uh, citation style is the Institute of Electrical Electronic Engineering Citation Method, IEEE method. This is the current concept method used in most of the uh, articles or uh, articles of the in health field. So these uh, are presented in the form of numbers. Talk of the uh, citation site in the form of numbers. And numbers can be uh, with a uh, square bracket or round bracket. The numbers can be mentioned before full stop or after full stop. All the things if, uh, have to be uh, followed uh, after the requirement of the uh, Styles are uh, that is model language association style, mostly used in in, in case of uh, articles published in the humanities. And Chicago style is mostly used for the papers. So common paper uh, styles used are I E E I triple E style or alpha style in our literature. Next is the Vancouver style is the method whether. The first job, the volume is first, or here is first, here is end, at the end. So, this is as per the requirement of the journal. You have to go through the journal. Go through the journal, they give examples, styles of the reference writing. You follow those styles and write your reference accordingly. Then, you should have some basic knowledge about citation manager as well. So, here, part of the presentation, I said, different citation manager systems are there. This citation manager helps in collecting articles, the images, and cites research sources. Sources he connects the web browser to download your sources. You just keep go on adding your required articles in the either Whenever you can click on that article, you will get the either abstract or the full length of the article. And this also helps in changing the reference style. If you have, uh, your article is rejected from one journal, you will submit another journal. That required one other methods of uh, citation style. 
if you have a Jotra system, you have cited your uh, using Jotra, then things will be very easy. Even in one second, you can change the whole part. So one must know about this citation manager system. If you, know, if you don't know about that, ask your seniors, ask your faculty regarding this citation manager system. Appendix are the ancillary supplementary data. Sometimes uh, asked by certain journals, some additional information which you have, and you are not able to add those data because of limitations of the uh, journal. Some the journals they have limited number of tables, limited number of uh, figures. They have their limitations. You cannot uh, uh, submit any number of tables. So you have added information. You want to submit those information, their articles. Those can be appended or for any additional supplementary files. You can so, upload your supplementary files. Of course, that will not be visible in your uh, script, but any author can access those data. Then these are all personal content you need for the journal side. Most of the appendix requires uh, appendix the carries and the information content, information sheet, additional tables or figures which are, cannot be included in the main article, any questionnaire or survey methods you have used during your research method. And details of measuring system you have used, and uh, this can be appended individually or can be collectively appended after the requirement. The next part is review the paper by authors. So when you complete an article in a hurry, you try to submit it. And that will be translated. Unfortunately, for getting rejection of an article, it may work take months to get up. Your article may be rejected after six months of the submission. So, if you have uh, not thoroughly repeatedly, you have not gone through your uh, concept, uh, your descriptive, submitted the hurry book, then that will be similarly. So, always keep sometimes gap after completion of your art, uh, research writing and submission to a journal. Keep some gap in between that. Have time, have some good time, good money. Uh, you throw your papers repeatedly two times, three times, several times before submission. You can help take help of your uh, co-authors also. Give the articles to all your authors. All your authors will go through that. You can give their comments. You can modify as per requirement. You get different suggestions from the, from your co-authors so that uh, you can uh, please help uh, help in preventing rejection of your article after six months. Separate reviews is with a single purpose. Then review the paper for the content, review for the grammar. If you have uh, the free grammar systems are there, you can go through at least basic grammar checkup with using free softwares like Grammarly. And you will correct the basic grammar corrections. If you have advanced Grammarly or other systems, you have advanced software, uh, you should go through that. Correct your, correct your sentence, correct your noun, and correct your grammar. And try to avoid uh, words. This happens. Once you write it, you have not read several times. You will these things. So if you are it, you will find many words are in here. So that we really have a practice for you. So if you go through the, your, uh, Submitted or you have written articles two or three times, you will find out the you none know, of these sentence, sentences are not looking good. These words are repeated uh, several times in several articles. So these things can be avoided if you review your papers repeatedly with the help of your authors. Yes, plagiarism is must. You must go through plagiarism checkup of your article before submitting to any journal. These are really a crime if you have copy pasted somebody's idea here, so that should not be to steal and pass the ideas or words of another author as one so on. It's the plagiarism. Always try to try to avoid those things. If exact words are you are using, that means you are using the quotation of your article. Don't worry, you can quote it. Sentence you can quote it, but it should give a reference to the so don't forget to give citation to others because you have to give respect to their hard work 
in the form of citing an article that place and copy paste it in the article and conceive it. Uh, imagine it how it can be better way it can be presented on your own online. With that, you can present it. So there are certain uh, small, small tricks while writing your manuscript should be uh, should not be overly. Same sentence you are writing there, so which can be completed in one line, you will use three lines for uh, expressing the one line. So it should not be over body, should not be romantic. Please use of uncommon words. So if you show your English power using uncommon words, it should not be because all readers will not sit with a dictionary while reading script. So try to avoid any use of uncommon words. Just in a sentence should use same grammatical form. One sentence, one in the past, one in the future, another in the present. It should be for me. See, it should have a choose commas. If you in the uh, just to have a sentence, a lengthy sentence, you have used two or three commas in a one sentence. Sometimes this comma can change the whole theme of the sentence. So when you use the comma, use it seriously to sort your sentence to a limited words. Okay, so lengthy sentence should be avoided. Words should be should not be used. Study repeatedness of or length sentence without any limitations. Use or don't use abbreviations. You remember in the first instances, write the full word, write the abbreviation, subsequently you can use the don't use abbreviation at the beginning. You have to to be clearly written first before using subsequent abbreviations. Then numbers, when you are using numbers, if it is less than 10, like 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, it should be written in instead of a number. Except when you are using the time or weeks or quantum scale. Then you can use a number size less than 10. But when you are using number of less than 10, it should be written in word form, in figure. And the last part is guidelines for reporting resource. Different guidelines for the writing different research article. You are writing a systematic review, you are writing a clinical trial, clinical trial, you are writing your observational study. So all these types of different studies are different guidelines for writing the manuscript. This Prisma guidelines that is for the uh, writing articles of review articles or analysis article that is preferred reporting items for systematic reviews and meta analysis that is Prisma. Second as the consort article that is used for the uh, writing uh, manuscript for randomized control control trial that is concentrated standard of reporting trials. So you have to mention in your uh, introduction part in material method person that what guidelines you have followed in dealing writing your article. If it is your you are writing a research article in your city, it has to follow the uh, guidelines of consort. Next is the stroke guidelines used for the observational study in the uh, epidemiological studies. Stroke guidelines is used. Other guidelines are whose guidelines for the meta analysis of observational studies, star guidelines for reporting of diagnostic accuracy studies, spirit for standard protocol items, that is recommendations or for international trials. These are the guidebooks very often we use, SMAG guidelines, concert guidelines and stroke guidelines. This is the research article published in 2016. Please go through this article. There are hyperlinks in these articles. We will give you directive different types of research guidelines to Prisma, concert or stroke. The very useful article and all hyperlinks are there to know about different methods of uh, 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 medical research. The last part, when you have completed your writing person, then you have to now choose a, a right journal for publication. That's the most difficult for your part. You have to choose a right journal appropriate for your article, or it will return back in accepted uh, 
in the first sense only. So uh, there is a typical way of uh, patients on that for choosing an article. So every time they have a dream of uh, publishing the article in the book journal, like the book journals, we look for all the LCBR publishers, Springer, Sage Publication, Walter Pierre Oculor Publisher, Hindai Publisher, and other public publishers. All these journals have a dream. But the things are, and it's very difficult to uh, make a little bit of a dream for publishing in these articles. You have to have work hard, you have to, have, you have to write the best, best way uh, of writing your research uh, um, thing to publish in these journals. Think it impossible. St start working, writing your article, start publishing even to our IJ PMR journal. So you can, uh, you can uh, further write in the also in the next category. So you should have come, come out of the initial. You have other methods of selection journal. There are three types of uh, common journals available. There are one group for subscribed journals. Uh, second groups are open access journals where you need to pay for that for publishing the article. There are certain hybrid journals. Once they are, your article is accepted, the publisher will ask you whether you choose for open access or a subscribe. Subscribe the uh, journals, do not charge any article publishing charge. But if you uh, opt for an open access journal to increase the visibility uh, uh, of your article, for the open access journal, anyone can access it. So that increases the visibility of your article. But, uh, in that, in other hand, you have to pay uh, that is called article processing charge. It may be thousand, it may be lots. So it depends upon if you have uh, article is funded, uh, you have mentioned the source of funding. If you have funded articles, you can publish in the open access. So uh, before uh, completing a research, you have to declare uh, your funding status, you have to declare your uh, interest of conflict among the authors, all you have to give, all this you have to declare. Then, uh, if still you are confused about selection of a journal, then these are the points you should look for. Impact factor factor of a journal, if it is a high impact factor, uh, whether your article is suitable for that or not. What is the review process? Duration of review process. Some uh, journals, they take review process of six months, seven months, eight months. So if you want to hire a honeymoon to publish your articles, you have to say that what is the normal review process for that journal. What is the indexing status, whether the PubMed, non-PubMed, or the Scopus index, which index the journal is having, the time, how much of time they are taking for the uh, first um, acceptance, what is the timeline for acceptance to publication, that timeline you can get it from the journal side. Chance of acceptance, instruction to the authors, one must go through that. What is the requirement of the journal? If your article is not confirming the requirement, you should not opt for that. With the respect to the content, it's a very really good thing. Many uh, like LCB or Springer publishers, they have uh, sites where you can see whether you are what are the uh, journals under LCB or the Springer publisher which are suitable for your articles. You will have to visit or uh, the abstract that is in the website. You will have to submit your abstract, it will suggest the number of journals which are suitable. Uh, for your articles. And they also give you an idea about the percentage of acceptability, duration of acceptability in a subscribed or a open access journal, then about the timeline you can choose. That uh, what is the per acceptance? There are some journals that are accepted, acceptable is 5%, 10% only. So you have to choose. If you want to go for a 10% acceptance or you want to go for a 50% acceptance. All these things you will get it if you once you put or uh, submit your abstract to the uh, website. There are certain sites and the links are there where you can submit and you will get all details of different journals under different publisher. So accordingly, we can choose your journal. So to conclude uh, my presentation, I think of the publication in the beginning, I said that you see it's an art that uh, that come out of in practice and practice to be a good test. So if you want to have a, a good writing, you have to practice and practice and practice. You want to be innovative. Start writing. Let it be rejected. If it is rejected, it's a good thing. You will get recommendations by different reviewers. What are the lacunas in your article? It will be posted by the reviewer in the first journal. 
when you connect your things, you get to know that what you have now. You connect those things, then some of the other things. So that means you can have a good job. Don't be disheartened. Have you thought it? When you submit to third job. This way, you can proceed in writing. Always practice, practice to be a good artist. And your article manuscript should be simple, should be clear, should be easily understood. And there is a key principle for writing a manuscript. Keep the format short and simple. Your manuscript should be short and simple. Keep the paragraph in your manuscript short and simple. Keep the short sentence in your uh, paragraph short and simple. So if you follow this simple way of writing, then there are every chance that your article may publish in your journal. Thank you. All the best for your upcoming publication. Thank you very much. Hello. Hello. Uh, good evening, sir. Good evening. It was very nice presentation, sir. Thank you very much. Uh, if you have any questions, it can be put in the chat box so that uh, we'll have a brief discussion on that. Sir, one question is there, sir. Yes. Sir, is there any basic books to read for sample size calculation and data analysis method? There are a lot of books in that. Uh, Indian authors and foreign authors also. Uh, statistics and medical research. There are good books are there. Uh, you can go through that. But don't worry for that. Uh, the sample size calculation, it's, if you know it's better, if you don't know also, uh, nothing to be worried. You can take help of the statistician. But things can be easier if you know the things. But there are a lot of books are there on statistics and research methodology. I think okay, sir, no more. Uh, sir, there is no more questions on that. Sir, no more question is there, sir. Okay. Uh, I hope this research, uh, this presentation will help you and uh, writing your thesis and writing if you have any research you have collected the data, uh, you can uh, start writing your publications. I can see using sir is on the sir. Namaste, sir. Namaste. It was a very good uh, presentation. Thank, Thank you very you, much. Sir. sir, it was meant for the juniors, the PG students, those who are starting their writing their thesis. And uh, this, uh, I hope this will be helpful for the uh, the things, the way they have to write. And uh, maybe uh, we have seniors. It will be very helpful, definitely. <laughs> sir. Thank you, sir. Thank you so much. So, uh, I think there is no more question in the chat box. Uh, sir, no, no more questions are there, sir. Then, thank you very much for attending the webinar. And I hope this uh, presentation will be helpful for the juniors and PG students. And uh, I must thank the uh, PR team of IAPMR who is constantly helping us, providing the Zoom partner platform uh, for conducting this webinar and we'll continue to have this discussion every uh, month basis and hopefully in the coming month also we'll come with some good discussions and thank you everybody for joining with us. Thank you Yusin sir uh, for uh, joining this webinar. Really your presence encourages us for uh, conducting this webinar. Thank you very much. And thank, thank you. you all. Thank you. Uh,